Well, good morning, Honey Ridge. I'm very pleased to be able to join you today and to share this next section of our devotional journey through the book of James. I know it's been a long time since I've been with you in person, having been working up in Sudan for most of this year, and it may still be a while before I can be back in Johannesburg. Um, but Lord willing, as you're listening to this, I will be getting ready to get on a plane and leave this country. Um, but it's wonderful that uh, I can still be a part of the church and share with you in this devotion. If you've been following the series up in, in James up until now, you will have probably picked up that James is making a case for Christians to be people of action. And much of what he's been talking about has had to do with how we conduct our lives. It's been a theme right from chapter 1 verse 19 where he starts talking about how we control our anger, how we control our speech, how we treat those who are marginalized or disadvantaged in society such as widows and orphans and how we should react and respond to people in the church who have different status or different levels of wealth. Ultimately all of this has been building up to the section which you would have looked at yesterday which James summarizes in verse 17 saying that faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And that brings us to our passage for this morning, which is chapter 2 from verses 20 to 26. And James writes and he says, You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that said, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Here we can see James is trying to anticipate an objection which he expects someone might make to his statement that faith and deeds have to work hand in hand. Someone might say to him, prove it. Why should my faith have to have deeds attached to it? It's quite clear that James thinks that it's a pretty silly objection to be making, given that he describes the person asking as foolish. This is not something that anyone should even try and challenge. But it seems that James suspects that there were readers then, and most likely there are people now, perhaps even some of us, who haven't grasped the radical influence that faith should be having on our lives and our actions here on earth. And so James offers two examples as evidence of what he sums up in verse 22 of the section we've just read. Faith and actions must work together to make faith complete. And the two examples that he uses are the Old Testament characters of Abraham and Rahab. And I think we must point out right from the start that this passage is not one without some difficulties in interpreting it. Because for both of these characters, in verse 21 and verse 25, James uses the phrase that they were considered righteous for what he or she did. In some versions it says that they were justified by works. And this seems to fly in the face of what is one of the core doctrines of Protestant Christianity, which is that we are justified by faith alone, apart from the law and apart from works. Our salvation does not depend on us working for it. And so I want to first look at these stories and try and show that for Abraham and Rahab, 
and then by application and extension, the requirement for us ourselves is that faith, which is the belief that God has saved us in Christ and the hope that God will fulfill his promises, that faith must already be in place beforehand and that faith leads to the actions which James mentions here as an outworking. So when James says Abraham and Rahab were justified by works, he doesn't mean that they were saved by works. He means that the works were evidence which justifies us being able to say that they had faith. In this passage, Abraham is mentioned in the context of the well-known story which you can read in Genesis chapter 22, where the Lord tests Abraham by asking him to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. This is a son which God has promised he will use to work out his covenant through Isaac to give Abraham offspring as numerous as the stars. And yet Abraham is now being asked to sacrifice him as an offering. So how do we know that this is not a deed by itself which makes Abraham righteous, but one which is only possible because he had faith. Well, it comes from the verse which James mentions in verse 23. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That statement comes from all the way back in Genesis chapter 15, when God first makes a promise to Abraham that he will have a son. A statement made long before Isaac is even born. Abraham believes that God is true to his promises and places his faith and trust in him, such that when it comes time for Abraham to act as God has asked him to, Abraham has the faith to know that God will honor his promises and bring about a nation through Isaac, even if at this moment he's being asked to sacrifice him. Abraham trusted that God's promise would not fail, even in the face of something which seemed to totally disrupt that plan. Whether Abraham believed that God would provide an alternative sacrifice or raise Isaac from the dead, Abraham's faith was the underlying foundation on which he could act to demonstrate it. Secondly, we look at Rahab, and you can find her story in Joshua chapter 2. Now, Abraham in the Bible is often considered to be a very special role model sort of person, and perhaps Rahab's actions are slightly more relatable to us than being asked to sacrifice our child. The context here is that the Israelites are coming to the promised land and they send spies into the city of Jericho to see what awaits them. As these spies enter the city, Rahab hides them in her house, and when the king comes looking for them, she misdirects him and sends him to another place whilst giving the spies a chance to escape. Why does she do this? Well, we can see that Rahab had a trust and a faith in the Lord. If we look at Joshua chapter 2 verse 9, and Rahab is talking to the spies and she says, I know that the Lord has given this land to you and that a great fear of you has fallen on us. If you skip down a few verses to the second part of verse 11, she continues and says, For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. This statement shows that Rahab had a faith which led her to act in good ways. She demonstrated to the spies and down the years to us too as we read the story that she had faith in who God was and what he had said. And so, what is the application for us today? Well, I think in previous devotions and in some more to come, you will have seen James giving quite a few examples of good deeds that might demonstrate our faith. And certainly James is trying to spur us on to act in love and good deeds. But I want us to also be encouraged as we see the great faith-proving works of Abraham and Rahab that they did not do them out of their own strength, but only because they knew what the Lord had said. Many, if not most of you listening, uh, will have also placed your faith in the salvation, grace and promises given to us through Christ. And so yes, we must act, we must show that our faith is in the Lord. But as we are called to act, 
we realize that these are not deeds which we must carry out under our own strength and willpower. Abraham and Rahab were only able to do what they did because they had faith. For us now, we're going through times of great uncertainty and turmoil and struggle, and many more areas have opened up for us to do good works and to show love to those who need it. I'm sure as you go about your life, the Holy Spirit will guide you and point you to times when you can do good works. Many times in those moments, we wonder whether we really should do something. I know for me, the little voice often pops into my head telling me it's taking too much of a risk or sticking my neck out too far. But I think in these two characters, James is trying to show us that it's not about trying harder to do more and more work, but about first making sure that we are grounded in faith and then leaning on that faith to demonstrate it to those around us by the works that we do. So in closing, I would encourage you to exercise your faith in the days ahead through good works to those around us. But know that we do not have to do them out of our own strength, but only by holding on to the hope and love that we have in Christ. Let's close in prayer. Father, help us to trust you. We pray that we might search the scriptures more and more to know you deeper and to grasp more of who you are and your promises. And in doing so, to strengthen our faith, Lord, and to be able to lean on that faith as you lead us to live lives which are marked by good deeds. Amen. Amen.